welcome to the fifth generation. I'm Julie Snook. I'm here at the Telstra Vantage Conference in Melbourne. There is so much going on here as Australia's largest telco explores the future of fifth generation connectivity. What that means for the Internet of Things and data collaboration and how 5G will enable businesses to generate new jobs, growth and prosperity. It's here that innovators and investors are teaming up to shape the future in ways you and I can barely imagine. It's about ensuring that we can bring the best technology that's available to us through the network to ensure your businesses can thrive. Because the telecommunications network in this country and globally is fast becoming the single most important platform for every technology innovation, every government, every business and every household in the country. The fifth generation of networks is unlike anything we've seen before when it comes to connectivity. McKinsey recently issued a report looking at the economic benefits of 5G and what they said in their report was that by 2035, because of all the power that 5G will unlock in right across various uh, industries in, in our economy around the world, they're predicting that it will add 12 trillion dollars to global economies with new jobs, new applications uh, and productivity improvements uh, to, to uh, various economies. So um, I think it's going to be very powerful indeed. So what is 5G and why is it a game changer? Well 5G is certainly exciting because it's the next generation of wireless technology. It promises to be faster. It promises to provide more capacity and it's going to bring new capabilities to both our enterprise customers but also our consumers that you could never do before with 4G. Let's talk about the speed because I find this to be quite impressive. So, um, so with 5G initially when we've launched it and we did at the end of May, the speeds are about two to three times that of 4G, which is pretty impressive because, because our 4G speeds are pretty good. Um, but in the next uh, two years or so, we will start to see those speeds climb up, the peak speeds, to about eight to ten times that of, that of 4G. So we're really starting to get up to those um, speeds that the hype which has preceded 5G is getting to. The term latency, we use it a lot here. What does it mean? So latency is all about the time it takes for a signal to go through the network. So from the time you send an order to the time it gets it re received and processed. So if you're doing something like remote surgery and you say you've got a surgeon in Sydney and he's doing a remote operation, say, you know, 200 kilometres away, when he orders the scalpel to stop cutting, it stops immediately. And that's what latency is about. And you can only do that with 5G and not 4G. And that's why we're using this term game changer, isn't it? Because it this, is. Is, this has the ability to save lives. Absolutely. It's got the ability to save lives, um, so in the medical sphere. But it also brings to life so many different layers of productivity improvements for manufacturing companies, for miners who might want to do remote operations of mine or remotely operate a dump truck um, to be able to do that uh, from across the continent and have that work efficiently, you need that game-changing low latency. g is the first network designed specifically for the world of the Internet of Things. But what exactly does that mean? The Internet of Things is, is really the concept that we're going to start connecting everyday devices to the Internet. Um, some of the examples that we have seen has been connected fridges um, yeah, and connected cars and so forth. Um, but the, the ultimate idea of connected things is to obviously make your business better at the end of the day. Why do businesses need to be embracing IoT? When we, when we look at it, that global competitiveness, I, I think all, all businesses in Australia and across the globe at the moment um, obviously faces 
more intense competition. Yeah, so uh, what we are seeing globally is that companies are now needing to make decisions on a lot more finer base than what they perhaps had to do in the past in order to remain competitive. So I would say as a base minimum, most companies should be looking at this purely from a point of view that it makes your business better, whether it's to manage your risk or whether it's to increase your profitability or whether it's just to improve customer satisfaction. We're seeing a variety of use cases that makes it necessary for businesses to explore this topic to make sure that they are still relevant in the future. It's hoped that harvesting data and information will lead to efficiencies that can address some of our biggest problems. If we look at one of our biggest problems at the moment uh, with the droughts that we're experiencing, we're working with a number of water utilities to manage water better. Uh, there's a lot of water that gets um, lost between the dam and the, um, yeah, and the tap. We, we estimate it's somewhere between 10 to 20 percent of the water. Uh, so if we can manage that water supply better, then we're in a position where we believe we can save about 66 billion litres of water per year which is a phenomenal amount, you know, so that is a very basic solution, um, is, is, is something that can have a massive impact. Pretty much every water utility is looking at this at the moment, and so we're working with a vast array of the utilities where they're starting from the digital meter, um, you know, it's turning the mechanical meter into something that can be measured digitally, um, but then moving upstream, measuring things like water quality, pressure in the systems, and if you've got a sudden drop of pressure, it probably means that you have a leak somewhere in the system. So. Um, um, the wood utilities are obviously taking this space extremely seriously um, and doing a lot of proactive work in trying to address the, you know, the concerns that we have in that space. We're also seeing more complicated solutions um, such as connected vehicles where a number of the vehicles coming out will soon have SIM cards embedded in them which um, will play a role, a role obviously in terms of you know, how, you, how you drive and how you interact with your vehicle and how your customer experience around your vehicle will be. Um, very practically speaking, at the moment when we look at things like vehicle services, you, you service a vehicle at an interval based on what your mechanic might be telling you. Um, whereas in the future, we might get a car talking to your mechanic and telling your mechanic, hey, we need to replace your brake pads. Um, and that obviously increases the efficiency at which we do it but it also would limit the breakdowns and things that people would experience. What are some of the challenges we're going to be finding all yeah, the way, though? There's some really Australian challenges. You know, one, of the, one of the challenges that we've seen with the major vehicle manufacturer is that they've been trying to do a um, self-driving vehicle and they can't figure out how a kangaroo hops, so it drives the computer insane a bit. So there's a lot of implementation challenges. Some of them are unique to our um, climate and, and to um, yeah, our geography. Uh, yeah, when we think of the outback, for example, temperatures hitting 50 degrees Celsius, it plays havoc with some of the electronics. So we have to overcome our own Australian challenges, including the kangaroos. <laughs> Which is so Australian, so unique. This is the most connected car you've ever seen. This car uh, has connections to the Telstra network, but also to other vehicles around it, like this car. So uh, when this car's driving around, it's sending a lot of information about what it's doing. Uh, this is all focused about road safety. So it's about making roads safer using uh, communications technology. This car's capable of six different tricks, shall we say. Um, it's got an emergency brake alert. So when a vehicle in front of it hits the brakes too hard, this car gets an alert, and that could be 500 metres away down the freeway, well before you're actually in proximity to each other, you get that early visibility. Uh, it's got a slow stopped vehicle warning, so if you just pop the hazards on, you might be on a blind corner, Great Ocean Road, something like that, um, and you'll get an alert as you're coming around that there's someone stopped in a bit of bother. Um, it gets dynamic speed zone updates, so if you're heading across uh, any of the roads that have those dynamic speeds, or it might be you know 40 kilometres an hour because of high winds, all of that comes into the vehicle in real time. Uh, it gets advisory speeds if you're on a country road, you should be taking this corner a little bit slower. This car also, this is one of the really cool ones, this car knows if you're about to run a red light. Even better than that, this car will tell another car that you're about to run a red light, and hopefully save their life too, right? So that's super cool. And the last, last of the six tricks is uh, that um, when this car approaches an intersection, if that intersection's got a, a camera installed, we can use that camera to detect pedestrians and then tell the car where all the pedestrians are using the, the Telstra network. Um, and as a result, the car's not having to do that sensor job. It can just be told there's a pedestrian over there, there's a pedestrian over here. And obviously that's really important for safety. Are you telling me that I need to go and buy a new car? 
car. Everyone needs to buy a new car all the time. I need a new car, you need a new car. We need this car. <laughs> I'd love this car. Unfortunately, it's a prototype. You can't buy it. But, you know, soon, not, not many years. Um, this sort of hardware isn't that different to the kind of hardware that goes into your mobile phone. So to go from a proof of concept like this to a commercial on-road vehicle um, doesn't require any fundamental breakthroughs. It's, it's really exciting. The power of 5G and the Internet of Things is said to have a huge impact on road safety. Look no further than the rollout of these little guys. Yeah, these are the autonomous road safety cones. We're, sp we're building a project with Transurban to put these cones out in front of the safety vehicles. So this is to protect the vehicles from impact, to give the cars warning that the, the incident is occurring. These cones will automatically drive into position, into formation, in front of the vehicle to protect it. Over the year, there's around about 50 deaths in road zones, so this will reduce that number significantly by warning motorists that there is an oncoming road accident or, or breakdown and a vehicle in front of them. What other technology are you working on in terms of safety? Yeah, so this is um, IoT type technology uh, using 4G or 5G. Uh, I've, I'm holding a handheld device that's triggered off if a vehicle enters a zone, uh, one of the work zones, so that'll give people a chance to react. Uh, we only heard yesterday from one of the workers that a car was coming through the safety zone, had to jump the barrier to get out of the car's way. He landed in the Yarra River, so these are the sorts of risks that they take. This sort of technology will help prevent that sort of uh, occurrence from happening, at least give the people warning to, to react to it to get out of the way. So when can we expect to see these cones out and about on our roads? Yep, so these, these particular cones are prototypes at the very moment, but they'll be out in production in about March next year, March to May, somewhere in that period of time. To help businesses prepare, Telstra has launched Australia's largest technology services company, Telstra Purple. Telstra has such an incredible breadth of technology and services and Telstra Purple can help our customers make the very most of the technologies and services that you see all around us here at Vantage and also then add to those technologies and services the capabilities that they need to actually solve the problem, to fill in the colour in the gaps around the colour of the picture if that makes sense. So for those customers sitting at home watching this thinking purple, purple, what is it all about? What am I going to get from it? What are they going to get from it? They'll get an outcome. So our, cust our, our peeps, our purple peeps, will always start with the purpose. What is it the customer's trying to get out of, out of the project that they're trying to achieve? And then we'll help them understand what are the technical components, what are the process components, who are the other partners that we need to work with to bring together. The research that we just did as Telstra in the last year showed across 14 markets, 12 industries, nearly 4,000 respondents, a company is twice as likely to succeed in their digital transformation if they move beyond the technology and engage their people, work through their processes and have the right partnership. Twice as likely. So my encouragement to all of our customers, start with your purpose and then we can go from there. Highlight some of the services as well. So everything from data analytics through workplace solutions like collaboration, we can secure networks, we can do human-centred design to help a customer. What is human-centred design? A bit of a buzzword. Start with what is the problem? How do we define the problem you're trying to solve for in a very human way? When it comes to the rollout of 5G, Australia is proudly a world leader. There's a lot of technology advancements coming out of Australia, um, probably some of it due to our unique challenges in terms of our geography and our weather, um, that plays a big role that we are addressing with innovation. The thing with Telstra right now and the 5G network is we are leading the world in our developments in use cases for our enterprise customers, which is really exciting. And so we're, we're at the bleeding edge of this stuff in Australia and we're really proud of that. From battery life to security in the 5G world. Coming up after the break, we explore some of the challenges facing the fifth generation of connectivity. Plus, what it means for individuals like you and I.
This update is proudly brought to you by Telstra Vantage. Insight, inspiration, innovation. Welcome back to the fifth generation. Now, the rollout of 5G does not come without its challenges. From battery life to health concerns and data privacy in the 5G world, there are a number of issues being addressed here at Telstra Vantage. Times are certainly changing. We're now talking about the Internet of Things. What does that mean for us at home as consumers? It's the Jetsons is becoming <laughs> real. Has. So we're, we're now in a place where things that were essentially objects before, and that's where we talk about the things, are going to become intelligent. They're going to become connected. And at Samsung and the, the open platform that we work on, we make sure that all of these objects work as one. And we see the mobile being the control panel to your life. So essentially, when you're traveling from the office you get in the car and you get home, you have a seamless experience through all of that. In terms of the challenges that we might be seeing with the rollout of 5G, what, do you, what are you predicting? There's, there's a lot of discussion around battery life and with all the intents, if we're streaming more, if we're using our devices more, can we support it from a battery? And actually, the, the short answer is yes. There's a couple of areas as to why that is. One is the processor. We've got a lot smarter with the processor that's in the device. And these devices, they're called smartphones, and they're smart for a reason, because they're starting to learn through machine learning as to how you operate. So they know when you will use your device, they know when you're sleeping. And with 5G, because downloading will happen so fast, it means that we're not actually downloading over a longer period of time. We're doing it in a shorter period of time, which means the battery usage is actually less. And then the other thing with 5G is it's got, the device is continually talking to the network. But what we've gone with Telstra and with all operators in Australia is there's no technology in place that means that we're not constantly looking for a 5G network. It knows when it's 4G and it knows when it's 5G. In terms of 5G, um, if I'm inside or downstairs or outside, are we going to see a little bit of a difference in terms of the latency? There will be a little bit of a difference. Obviously, being outside and being close to a tower is where you're going to get the best experience initially. In building propagation will improve, and there's, there's new technologies coming along in the next few months, which will allow that to essentially penetrate deeper into buildings. One concern around the fifth generation of connectivity is how the electromagnetic energy levels may be harmful to us. Well, Mike, tell us, what are you doing here? So we're looking at the EME levels or the electromagnetic energy levels off the 5G tower and we're measuring it compared to the safety limits set by the government. What we're finding is that even though we're right next to the 5G tower powering all advantage, we're a thousand times below the safety limit right here and in fact, we're getting more EME off a normal everyday baby monitor. People often ask us, is 5G safe? Well, we rely on the government safety standards to make sure that we're working to all of the right levels to ensure it's safe for everyone to use. I know it is a point of contention. There are a lot of questions around the safety associated with this. So can you talk me through some of the examples that we've got here? So a few people have asked us. So what we're doing is we're measuring 5G. And if you can see here, this is the 5G signal. The safety limit is the t at the top, and we're about a thousand times down on this scale compared to the baby monitor, and you can see the baby monitor is slightly higher than 5G. In the middle is the Wi-Fi band, and when I turn the microwave oven on, oops, what you'll see is the microwave oven uses the Wi-Fi band, and you'll see the little spikes come up. And that's sometimes why you get interference on Wi-Fi when you use a microwave. But of course, the signal levels here, they're again, they're slightly higher than 5G, but they're all well below the safety limit. So how do other household devices compare? So, well, these are common devices. This is like a baby monitor you'd get in every day, your everyday shop. We've got walkie-talkies that they use on construction sites. Even the everyday car keys, when you push the car key, you actually send a small signal to the car and this device picks it up. And of course, this is very, very low, but these are all common everyday devices and of course we all use microwave ovens and they're, when they're on they produce a bit of EME but they're all well below the safety limit. The health of our cyber security is perhaps more important in the 5G world. 
We're learning about the Internet of Things, IoT, and it sounds like a world of endless possibilities, but what challenges and risks come with that? IoT um, touches the whole, you know, a lot more things are connected. Um, but where this becomes a major problem is critical infrastructure. As more things are connected, the actual um, severity of being compromised actually grows as well. And I'll give you an example. Let's talk about a utility, a water utility or a power grid that's got Internet of Things, you know, part of that. If those devices are compromised, we lose power and we lose water. So this is kind of where IoT and critical infrastructure starts to play a, a more critical role. But from a home user, um, we're connecting a lot more. You know, we have wristwatches, iPods, Fitbits, our air conditioning is connected. And what that does, it means that we're more susceptible to a potential attack at home and also in the business. So it's a, a major issue. How is the industry finding it? Are there enough people to cope with the demand of this role? So that's a really good question. And, and, and the, the answer to that is no. Unfortunately, there's not enough cyber professionals um, to fill the demand. And there's some statistics out there by 2026, you know, the job shortage will be, you know, in excess of 18,000. So cyber skills, education, awareness, um, and, and bringing out more cyber professionals is a fundamental, not only to helping the Australian economy, but also to helping organisations deal with this problem. So there's a skill shortage definitely in the industry. So what do we do? What's the answer? I mean, Cisco is doing a lot uh, as a company in partnering with academia, TAFEs, universities, um, you know, doing a lot through our Networking Academies program, which is a lot more training and exposure. So the key thing is, as an industry, we need to work together. Um, the thing with cyber is the bad guys all work together in a synchronized fashion to target somebody. But from the good side, we don't really work together to share information, talk about what happened to me, I was attacked, and how we were going to help the next organization minimize that. And from a training perspective, you know, we need a lot more investment in curriculums um, to create new pathways for, for people that are unemployed, but also to help people get interested in the cybersecurity field. So when will consumers and businesses see the real impact of 5G? We've launched 5G at the end of May. We're rolling it out. We're expanding the footprint by five times this in, in the next 12 months. Uh, and we're taking it out to regional Australia as well because, you know, we want all Australians to enjoy 5G. And it'll take time before it gets out to where 4G is, but, you know, steady progress. And um, over the next two years is when we'll start to see some of those really cool use cases that I spoke about in terms of the immersive entertainment, where you'll see it much more widespread than it, than it is today. Everything is essentially going to be connected to everything. Absolutely. If you can find power, you can connect a network device and you get that machine talking to another machine in the network. It's all around you. So it's a massively exciting future. The fifth generation of connectivity offers great opportunities for businesses to improve almost every aspect of our lives. But like all innovation, the real challenge is in realising such potential. For the creative minds here at Telstra Vantage, that's the challenge they embrace.